Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the channel. I'm Mr. Peck. So today we are going to learn about a uh, circular motion. Okay, this is a new chapter for us because all this while before we learned about linear motion. So now we enter the circular motion. Okay, but before we start discuss some questions, uh, I want to do a simple summary. Okay, now. In linear motion, we have distance. Uh, uh, distance is measured in terms of length. So the unit is meter. Okay, unit is meter. Uh, for circular motion, uh, we have angular displacement. Why is it called angular? Because it is uh, described in terms of angles. Angles. The unit is radian. Okay. So, um, in linear motion, we also have velocity, uh, velocity uh, in terms of meter per second. Uh, but for circular motion, we have angular velocity. Sometimes it is called angular frequency. Okay, um, angular angular velocity. The unit is radian per second. Okay, radian per second. Um, so you see, uh, between distance and angular displacement. We have uh, the formula to relate these two. It is called S equal to R theta. Uh, so if we have angle, angular displacement, we can also calculate the distance of the arc. Yeah? Uh, if you look at the lecture note, uh, S equal to R theta. And between velocity and angular velocity, the formula is V equal to R omega. Uh, so you see these two formula, S equal to R theta, V equal to R omega is also more similar. Okay, uh, you can say that, that uh, the uh, this uh, the velocity represent the distance, the angular velocity represent the theta. Okay. Now, let's continue. So, uh, we have also the formula omega equal to two pi f. Uh, and frequency is 1 over period. So when we substitute frequency with 1 over period, we got omega equal to 2 pi over period. Okay, that's very important. Next, we have the formula for centripetal acceleration. Uh, AC is equal to V squared over R. Okay, V squared over R. Uh, when we substitute uh, V equal to R omega, then we get the rest of formula. Uh, v square over R also equal to R omega square and also equal to V omega. So A centripetal acceleration has three formula. V square over R, R omega square and V omega. Next we have the centripetal force. Uh, centripetal force actually is a resultant force of all the available force acting on an object. Okay. So centripetal force is the resultant force. So since it is the resultant force, so it is also equal to ma. And because we normally say resultant force equal to mass time acceleration. So this time the resultant force is centripetal acceleration, then it is equal to mass time centripetal acceleration. Okay? When fc, you have ac. Okay? So... After that, we substitute the formula for centripetal acceleration. So uh, we got uh, V squared over R into the AC. So centripetal force, centripetal force is equal to MV squared over R, MR omega square, and MV omega. We'll just substitute this formula into AC. Okay. Uh, finally, uh, we have this. Uh, uh, we have this term called revolution per second. Uh, RPS, revolution per second. That means how many turns uh, the object makes. How many the object make how many rotations in one second? So actually, this re revolution per second is the same as frequency. You can say revolution per second is the frequency. So we need to know how to convert revolution per second into radian per second, uh, which is the omega. So revolution per second, uh, you must multiply with 2 pi radian. Uh, then you can convert 
the revolution into radian. Okay, uh, so revolution per second convert to radian per second, just multiply by 2 pi radian. And revolution per minute, uh, revolution per minute RPM, to convert to radian per second, uh, you have to multiply by 2 pi over 60. Uh, because uh, revolution, one revolution is 2 pi radian, and one minute is 60 seconds. Okay, uh, that is how you convert the unit. So that's all for the summary. So uh, now let us discuss our first question. Thank you.